Yes, guys, welcome to episode four of the under 23 So Rare Road to Glory. I hope you've all had a good week. If you are new to the channel, lads, and you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you do enjoy the video, please do give it a like. If you are completely new to Sora and you are yet to sign up, there's a link in the description of this video that will get you free market credits once you've purchased your first five cards from the auction. So let's jump straight into it then, lads. 261 points, six and a half points away from our first box. Absolutely gutted. A couple of really good scores in here, you know, one being our goalkeeper, another being Julian Bass. We trusted him, tough game, but he came up trumps and yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that, you know, our foresight on that one was was correct. But what we didn't get correct, lads, was Camille Negley. Goal against Feyenoord in the game that we thought would be too tough for, for Sparta. I mean, I mean, to be fair, Feyenoord did get a red card and, and whatever, but regardless, he scored and... Spy didn't. So, you know, we, we definitely got our forward selection wrong here. And that's just bitterly frustrating. But what makes this lineup just so painful and just the gallery itself will suffer because of it. Adson and Pletinich both got injured at halftime. Basically broke their legs. I'm not laughing because they've done that, but just how ironic that is. I think Adson had a, a stress fracture, but it, it basically means that he needs an operation. He's going to be out for the season. So he misses the whole Brazilian league. And Platinich actually did break his, his leg, I think. And, but with those unfortunate situations, you know, we don't really have a bank balance right now. You know, my only option I felt was to, to go to one of the bots um, and, and try and basically exchange those two cards for a card that, you know, we can use that has immediate utility. With a gallery the size of ours, you know, we can't afford to, you know, to get two players injured for the, for the rest of the season, you know, in one lineup. That is, you know, some luck. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really disappointed in that. You know, they're both injured. You know, from a personal standpoint, but for for the road to glory itself, it's a big blow for us. Like it really is. Platinich is one of our only two defenders that we had. We only have one right now. Um, and Adson, to be fair, we do have a bit of midfield cover, so like I can kind of absorb the Adson injury a bit more. But yeah, it's it's a real sore one to take, especially because they were both in the same lineup. But anyway. We did bring in um, a replacement for Adson, but at the expense of that, we did have to offload both of the cards for Marco Bulat, who has signed, well, is playing for Standard Liège, who have improved massively since last season. He's taking set pieces, so he has a really good AA floor. He is able to get decisives as well. He's only had one so far, but you know, it's definitely better than nothing. And yeah, he definitely comes in to, to bolster our midfielder options. Whereas, you know, if I kept... If I kept Adson and Pletinich, lads, like, alongside Clarkson, that would have been three players injured. I can't afford to have three out of eight or nine players in my Road to Glory injured. That just can't work. Um, and so, yeah, we need to be able to chop and change where possible um, and, and play the matchups as, as best as we can on, on a limited budget. So I've updated the um, the spreadsheet and we've brought in Bula, of course. His floor is £1.73. So, you know, we have taken a bit of a hit on... Buying Platinich was one pound and one pence. Adson was one pound fifteen. So you know, we're like 40, 40, 50 pence down on that, effectively. And our gallery value right now on floor price is just over twenty quid. So you know, we're in a you know a fine enough position considering we haven't like won anything, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, it is what it is. Like we we have to just move. This is just part of having a smaller gallery. This is very real. This is very um, you know relatable. I think if if you are on a very low budget like like this road to glory, these things happen. Like this is football. And unfortunately, yeah, players get injured. And this is something that is obviously so frustrating for us Sora managers. But we have to just, you know, adapt, right? That's all we can do. Otherwise, you know, you don't get to put out lineups and whatever. So anyway, that, that's, you know, that's kind of the negative out of the way. We've turned it into a positive. We have brought in Marco Bula. We are technically one player down. If you want to look at it as, you know, just raw players, we've only got eight players now in the gallery um, where we did have nine. But that's fine. We can only play five every weekend. So it is what it is. But we do have some good news regarding Leighton Clarkson. He is back training with Aberdeen. I don't think he's going to start this weekend, but he is fit. But he has recovered from his shoulder injury. So that is good news. Uh, we do have quite a few mids now to choose from once Clarkson is back fit. And that was the extent of our weekend as far as uh, Sore Pro goes. Now, if we go over to Sore Rivals, which of course does play a big part in this series in the gallery, uh, we did get promoted. We are in Division 4 now. I went on a bit of a stinker last night, lads. I lost like five, four or five games in a row, which was terrible. I went on a bit of a win streak here. But one thing that's pissing me off so much right now, all I'm winning is tickets. Now, I know that's a good thing, and I'm sure if you're very low on tickets, winning tickets is fun. But I currently have 88 tickets because um, I had a bit of a surplus from when I didn't play Rivals for a long time. So, 
our rival, our rivals, our essence bar is just not growing at all. And it's just so, so frustrating. We're still at 10, um, 10 essence. We need 20 to craft our first card. And yeah, it's just super annoying. Like all I've won this past weekend is, is tickets. Now, you know, that is all well and good. But like I said, when I have a surplus, I don't need them right now. I really want essence so I can craft our first card. So yeah, that's been a bit annoying. I'm sure the, the tables will turn and we can get some essence from um, from some of these boxes that we're winning for, you know, the, the three win streaks and um, some of the challenges as well. Now, keeping on with rivals, Sora have announced a new co-op mode called Sora Rival Squads, basically, similar to what happened in the in the Euros. Um, there's a few T's and C's in the. You can only have um, you can only be part of one squad at each time. And only managers who have reached Division 9 or better can create a squad. All squads will start in Division 10. So basically, myself and nine of you guys um, is, is kind of the idea that I've got. Are going to be in the in the Road to Glory squad, the, the Sora Rival squad. And yeah, we're going to help each other basically compete for prizes. I think the top five, I'm not sure where it says, I think it's up here. I think the top five, there we go. So in fact, your squad uh, squad's overall standings is determined by the combined weekly rep points of its top five members so you know whoever's at the top five you're basically carrying us <laughs> in the squad and yeah the, this prize is to be won I, I think it's a good thing like i think it's a good thing for the game i think we can kind of utilize it quite well for the road to glory now i'm not gonna share the code of the rival squad that i've made i need to make this a little bit more fun i need you guys to comment below and let me know why you think you deserve to be one of my nine partners in the road to glory squad and yeah give me your give me your pitch give me your cv give me your resume and let me know let me know why you deserve to be in the squad also link your discord or twitter below so i can contact you and give you the code um, i will be contacting of course nine of you to join me you know to, to make up the 10 10 players that we need for the squad i'm excited to read through some of the pitches in the comments anyway that's rivals out the way we now need to get into what we've got cooking for this upcoming weekend now we need to go over to build we need to go to lineup builder and this is what we've got going on dakovic is away to gorica which is a fun enough fixture we've seen dakovic get clean sheets away from home i'm not worried about that at all danilo vega our only defender right now um, is at home to Casapia, which, I mean, to be fair, he wasn't too bad against Benfica. They only lost 1-0 Estrella, which is quite impressive, to be fair. He scored okay. Like, he had five net, uh, three net duels, one. Didn't really do much from an attacking perspective, but what can you expect? So I'm not actually too worried about that as a matchup. We've got three midfielders to choose from, which is, you know, better than having none or, or just two. Obviously, Clarkson will make up that fourth. Bass has a good fixture away to Willem too. Kenzo has a home fixture against Bristol City. We are yet to see him adjust fully to the championship. So I'm a little bit skeptical on him, despite being at home, where I have a little bit more trust in Bass. We then have Marco Bula, our new sign-in, away to Leuven. Again, somebody that, of course, hasn't played in the gallery yet, but I do trust him from afar and that I've seen that he is able to, to have a decent AA um, floor. And then if he can add a decisive like he did against Club Bruges, then we're talking, you know, we're into the dark greens, which is what we want. And then we have our two forward options in Camille Negley, who is a double A on the pick score, which is fun. And Sabai, who's at home as well, to Pau. So we have a, we have a few dilemmas to, to get through you know, from our midfielders and forward um, positions. Now, I'm going to go over to Predictify because I do want to just check how our players are looking as far as you know, what the experts think um, over on Predictify. Whether or not you know, they think that you know, our players are going to start. So let's go to Sparta Rotterdam in Challenger. Toggle to Sparta Rotterdam. They've got Bass down at 80%, which is great. And they've got Camille Negley down at 90%. So that is awesome. We can kind of trust, you know, barring any freak injuries in training or anything. Those players you know, should be good to go for this weekend. We need to go into the championship and have a little look at Derby County for Kenzo. And we toggle to Derby. And, ooh, Kenzo is behind Benjamin Osborne. And 20% behind David Ozoa. So, basically... Yeah, Kenzo might get dropped this weekend is what that's telling me. Whoever the predictor, um, the expert is here seems to seems to think that Kenzo isn't you know, isn't pulling his weight. So I mean that kind of reflects in his scores a little bit as well. Like I've like we just seen like he hasn't really he hasn't scored that well. So I know you know managers aren't looking at their Sora scores, but you know what I mean. Like he isn't he isn't being decisive. He's not getting goals, assists. He's not getting loads of duels won. Um, he's just not being effective clearly. And yeah, that's kind of showing in the. Um, in, in the in the prediction for Derby. So that's that's him out of the way. We need to go over to Contender 
because we need to have a little look at um, the second division. And Grenoble Foot do have predictions, and Sabai's at 50%. So Camille Negley right now is probably the front runner for our forward option, uh, probably partnered with, with Julian Bass. And then who else did we have that we needed to have a little look at? Oh, Marco Bula, of course. Let's go back to Challenger and have a little look into the Jupiler Pro League. And we've got, uh, where is it, to Standard Liège away to Louvain. And Standard Liège, there he is, Marco Boulat at 95%. So the experts are confident that Boulat starts this weekend. So that's, that's good enough for me. Before we do get off the topic of Predictify and just prediction websites, myself and Quinny do have our own code. So it's Quinny Harry. Um, once you've purchased an all access package, whether that's a one month, um, a three month or a 12 month, you will be entered uh, into a draw where you could potentially win a mystery signed jersey from Predictify themselves. So yeah, you'd be supporting us and of course you'd be you know, in, in with the chance of, of winning a mystery signed jersey as well. So this offer only applies if you purchase an all access. It doesn't apply if you purchase a specific region package. So for example, if you just buy a champion region package or just contender or just, um, or just challenges, it has to be the all access um, which allows you to see all three or, you know, every single prediction on the site effectively. So, and yeah, use code Quinny Harry if you are signing up to Predictify for your lineup projection needs. Now, so we can get rid of that. We can go back to our lineup itself. So, you know, if Kenzo's 50-50 or, you know, not even projected to start, Julian Bass has to start for us realistically. And similar here, right? We've seen Camille Negley's 90% 90, 90 on to start. We have to trust that for now um, over Sabai, who's at 50%. And then Marco Boulat, looks to be our extra player. Now, as far as our captain goes, I mean, Camille Negley's confidence must be high now. He just scored against Feyenoord. You'd like to think that Sparta are going to score a couple of goals away to Willem too. So the captain choice for me is either Bass or Negley. I think with the fact that Bass's AA score being a midfielder is probably going to be a bit higher than Camille Negley's. I do think Bass probably gets the nod because he does take set pieces as well. So if he does add a decisive to that AA floor, we've seen 7 AA in the first game, away to 20, really tough game, and then 25 AA at home to Feyenoord. So I can only expect his AA maybe is in that 20 to 25 range, maybe against Willem 2. And like I said, if he can add a decisive, then great. We can, um, we can definitely trust him as our captain. So yeah, that looks to be our squad for this upcoming weekend. We're going to input that into Sora itself because we want our team to be locked and loaded. Division 4... There's just over 2,000 participants so far. Of course, pays down to 25% boxes and 200th winner card. So, you know, we can only hope, lads, can't we? We can only hope. I'm going to really give rivals a go this weekend. Like I said, I'm just praying that we can win some essence to craft our first card. Let me toggle this to limited only, and we're going to input the team here. Dakovic, Vega, Bulat, Negli, and Julian Bass. Well, Captain Bass. And that is our team locked and loaded, lads. So... Just a few bits to recap. Make sure you are commenting below if you want to be part of my Road to Glory squad. And don't forget to put your Discord or Twitter handle um, in the comments as well because I will be contacting you that way and giving out the code to the Road to Glory rival squad that way. I really do hope you have a great week in general and of course on so rare. Like I said at the start of the video, if you did enjoy it, please do leave it a like. And if you're watching this and you've not subscribed, please just make an account if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. Hope you have a great day, lads, and I shall see you guys in episode five.